then there is another thing which uh, which is also part of regularization what is called actually dropout so this dropout right what this means is this right so suppose i have i have to start with right let me just draw a simple thing so i have let's say three of these neurons and then i have let's say two neurons and uh, let me just take a very very simple case okay, and let's say i have i have a three Mm, three dimensional input okay then let me just look at this so this goes so so what you will what you will typically have are these right so we'll have another weight going to this and then let's say we have a third guy going to this okay, i'm not numbering the weights and all but we understand and then right this goes here this goes here this goes here and similarly right this goes here this goes here this goes here and then let us say, let's say, let's say out comes right something. Now, you of course, have a large network right I mean it is not going to be as simple as this, but then a dropout right actually means that means like you know deactivating one of these guys. So, for example, right if I if I if I if I drop this neuron out ok dropout means ok drop it is ok I will tell you what we actually do it is not like you drop just one neuron, but suppose you drop it right then what it what it effectively means is that it is so it is like it is like hanging there ok it, it does not do anything ok just to just to illustrate right what this idea of dropout is. So, what this will what this will effectively mean is that once you drop it right then this this network right will then kind of look like this. So, you still have this ok, but then what is it? So, the other one so the ok. So, we just have the purple guy going and then you have these two and uh, what was it that I used ok this color right. So, this goes oh we right. So, you had this this and now what will happen is right. So, these guys will go here and similarly these two will go here and out comes this right. So, dropout effectively means this. So, this guy is left hanging there ok it does not receive anything it does not send out anything it just sits there ok. And if you are doing backward forward pass backward pass and all that will all that will all exclude exclude this kind of say neuron. So, all the paths will go from elsewhere, but this but through this neuron it right, you would not find any any path going through. So, all forward and backward passes will will leave this neuron out ok all forward and and backward passes passes will exclude this or leave this neuron out okay will exclude this this uh, this neuron means okay this guy okay maybe I should just indicate it by some color so this guy exclude ah, this neuron out exclude this neuron that is the dropped neuron out. By the way there is just one small little table that I forgot to actually write down because that table right I think you should basically keep in mind ok. Every time we do now it is best to keep that in mind. So, I will just draw that you know quickly ok and then we will come back to this I wanted to do it I somehow forgot ok. One thing is this ok. So, one table is this ok. So, I think you know right these are two tables that uh, that you should just sort of you know keep in mind. So, so, this has something like this. So, you have algorithm and then you have number of steps in one epoch, steps in one epoch ok. Number of steps in one epoch will actually mean that how many updates you make right on the weights correct I mean number of steps. So, the steps is number of updates or you see iterations all those things are equivalent right iterations updates number of updates or iterations right that is what it means. So, when I say steps what we really mean is that ok and you can have you can have three situations right that we have seen already just that right just that we should just keep them. So, a vanilla G D or what is called a batch gradient descent which we saw earlier vanilla G D ok. So, this is all about G D ok this is all a gradient descent and uh, assuming that if n is the number of training samples n is the say total number of training samples and uh, given that n is the total number of training samples and uh, or uh, data points right order and uh, b is the batch size 
and B is the bat size. B is the bat size. Okay. Then let us say first is this one, next is stochastic G D, which we saw earlier, right, yesterday. The third is mini batch G D. Right. Now can you tell me number of steps in in one epoch vanilla? One. Stochastic G D? N. And mini batch G D? N by B. Right. So N by B. This always right. So from now on, because right, we are going to be talking about batch norm and all, and therefore it always remember that when we say a mini batch rate, right, it means that it is all happening within the epoch. Okay, so whenever you, whenever you make some updates and all, and then we say that we are doing it every for every batch of samples, mini batch of samples. That means that right during the iteration itself, it's all happening. Okay, so that's why this is one table, and the other one is regarding uh, this was this uh, no because we did soft max right. So today, so I thought I'll also write about the other table. that has nothing to do with gradient descent, but that is uh, that is a different table. But just for your quick reference, right, we'll also write that down. So that is like outputs. Okay, what this by outputs what we mean is whether your output is a probability or whether it is a real valued number for example it could be an image right in which case it will is just a number and then uh, so let us say okay, this again right I will ask you guys uh, then okay, so this is like real values so the output can be either real valued or it could be a probability. Right, which means the probability means you are doing a classification problem, you are doing real values it means that you are doing a regression problem okay. and uh, then we have uh, let us say uh, two more rows down there and uh, then here right let us just have two guys here. So one is I want to know what will be the output activation. So what will you fill in? So I have I so on my at my output I need I want a, I want a real value let us say. So what should be my output activation be like? What kind of a unit will you be will you think of? Should it be a sigmoid or should it be a linear? Linear unit is okay, right? I mean linear means it could be a relu or whatever, right? So by I mean by I mean relu is strictly speaking not linear, but by linear it what we mean is you know you can also have you can also have completely linear okay it doesn't mean that relu always has to be there okay if you're just saying real and it can be negative and all then it should be just fully linear okay, if you're saying real and it should be greater than or equal to zero then it will be relu so i'll write in general linear because i've not said real values but then greater than or equal to zero i've not said so it means strictly speaking just a linear unit will do that means summation wi xi plus or whatever not xi ai something right which is the previous output plus uh, whatever the bi for that and no more activation on that just that that comes out that is okay, right? You will be surprised, that is okay, right? So, it is just a linear unit, okay? It does not do anything, uh, but the, so accordingly, right? All this will change. So, this output activation, if I say greater than or equal to 0, but real, then it will become a relu, right? Things like that. Then, if it was a probability, probability is uh, not sigmoid because sigmoid is okay for binomial, but not for a, you know, a multinomial sort of distribution. Then, loss function. So, if you if you have an output that is real valued, then what kind of a loss function would you would you want to would you want to say propose a mean square error, right? So this will be like a squared error. Okay, so this will be like squared error. And if it is a probability, it will be a cross entropy. Okay, so these so these two tables, right? Keep in your mind, and most uh, and right, these two are really not even not even relevant because most of the time, right, we'll have only this. Okay, we'll be doing only this. And uh, this this whole thing, right, is actually important because depending upon the problem, the unit and everything can change. You can even the loss function and uh, uh, you know uh, and what kind of activation you want and so on. Okay. Now coming back to this uh, to this dropout. Okay. Now let me just write down. Okay, a little bit about uh, dropout. So what it actually means. Okay. Um, so the idea behind dropout is that right, you don't want only a few neurons to take on all the load. Because right, when you when you kind of when you free when you when you make it a free for all, then what happens is certain guys will 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 just like us right they will also be quiet right and they'll say let the other neurons do the work right and what will happen is that is exactly what is what is actually overfitting, right? Because what will happen is some neuron will just take on all the load and then they'll say okay right we will all together you know you know you know fit this cost function, 
but what will happen is the rest of the neurons which could have ideally been you know probably they are able to do other tasks right which they are very very kind of very probably you know no they need not be very strong but they are also see, capable of doing certain things but then they won't even do that so in a drop out what happens is what you do is you know at at any one point uh, let's say within a within a mini batch right? that's why again i come back to this mini batch term so what this means is within a mini batch when you have a network what you do is randomly right with some sort of a probability and this probability actually varies okay at the input it is actually a different probability but let's not worry too much about it let's say let's just focus on the weights so what happens is so the so with a certain sort of probability let's like typically it's 0.5 so with a 0.5 probability right you will actually you know drop a neuron or whatever right when you either pick or drop right either way it's 0.5 so what will happen is at any one point of time only half the neurons are roughly active okay so so what you have is i mean so so then it means that during that mini batch when you are when when you are when you are doing uh, when you are when you are kind of computing the losses and all all the forward passes and all right they are all happening only only over 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 those set of neurons that are actually active and the rest of the guys are like the one that i showed they are just floating around not doing anything then what you do is then after that particular uh, that particular right mini batch is over and when you go to the next mini batch right, you again you again bring back all of them right you bring back all of them then again again you say sample randomly so what you do so if you if you kind of right, continue doing this the idea is that uh, right all neurons will have a will have a say in the matter right so finally right, there'll be because then see this generalization right when we say the generalization we are hoping that there could be other neurons right which will actually end up doing very well i mean when you give a task which is a little i mean which is like you know uh, which is not exactly what you see in the training example but then something you know which could be a little away from that but then there are other neurons that can probably handle it so so this uh, so the idea behind dropout is not to really reduce the number of neurons i mean you would know uh, the I mean, number of weights okay that doesn't happen because eventually you'll use the entire this one network i mean it's not like you will you will uh, you will you know right you no know, drop uh, you see some of these or something right so you don't really drop anything but the idea is that this overfitting right i mean again like i said regularization is all about being able to be being able to you know do a generalization being able to generalize well outside a training set and for that you need uh, Uh, so right dropout is one way to sort of enforce that kind of regularization it's not true that you will get fewer weights but then you know the idea is that the generalization capability actually goes up okay so sorry so this is what this what in summary it is so i'll just write it just write this down okay now so so if if only some of the neurons take on the entire load if only some of the neurons take on the entire load of you uh, know of the task on hand and it can lead to overfitting okay that is the reason why you sort of let let only a few of them handle the task so really the i mean rest of the neurons really do not learn anything useful the rest of the neurons okay do not learn anything anything useful because because the, because the others have anyway kind of right done the job and therefore these guys really do not learn anything do not learn anything useful or anything useful means they don't really learn any you know useful features that can be that that probably will be useful when you are when you are doing uh, you know doing during inference time um then right so no no so right so typically okay yeah typically well almost always nodes are dropped nodes means these neurons okay nodes are dropped only once for for a, for a mini batch of samples only once for a mini batch of samples that means when you when you accumulate the cost only only those set of neurons will be there for the entire mini batch okay you don't keep changing within a mini batch once for for a, for a mini batch of samples and then before you start the next mini mini batch you sort of right you could kind of have bring them all back on board right and uh, and nodes are dropped with a probability p nodes are dropped or selected whatever nodes are dropped with a probability p and typically p is equal to 0.5 for the hidden layers this is a, this is a pro, i mean this is roughly okay sometimes you may see that some people may use a little away but need not be exactly 0.5 and uh, and forward and backward pass are done only through the active neurons 
backward pass are done only through the active neurons. Then finally, right, uh, the okay, which means that the dead neurons do not really do not really participate, and at uh, test time, okay, that means right during during training this is all okay, but then at the at the time of uh, inference, right, when you're using this network, all the neurons are active. All the neurons are active. <coughs> But their weights are, are actually multiplied by, which means their activation value, right? But their weights are multiplied by multiplied by p. Or multiplied by the same p, okay? That you had used for for dropping. The idea being that since every neuron is likely to have been picked with a probability p, since every neuron is likely to have been picked with to have been okay dropped or uh, sorry okay no okay right we'll just stick to dropping okay because if p is some other thing then it's not point five then this can change so we'll just keep it as dropped okay it's likely to have been dropped with probability p its activation should be should be reduced its activation should be reduced by p should be reduced by p okay so in a sense right this what does actually drop out and many people actually use this pretty right effectively okay so this is something that you will that you'll find right in many of the papers right people have people actually use this mm -hmm.